Good morning. We give honor to God, to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, our comfort and guide the Holy Spirit, to our brothers who come to make it possible for us to send forth the Word of God this morning, to all of the churches that is uh, assembled or scattered out abroad, I think is the way James put it, because we are indeed scattered abroad. But regardless of where, what our position may be, God is still in charge of our lives, and He has not left us. He is still the one that is director over our lives. And we thank Him for just being God and being the one that cares, and being the guide that got light for us, even in dark times. We we just thank God for His amazing grace. I'm going to ask that for a minute, for a moment, if you will, just bow your head with me. Father in heaven, we come, O oh Lord God, we, we come with thanksgiving in our hearts. We come thanking you, Father. We come praising you, Lord. We come thanking you for being such a good and such a kind, such a merciful and a wonderful God. Father, we come asking you to forgive us for all of our sins and cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness. Lord, we know that you know more about us than we know about ourselves. And Lord, you know more about what we need than we know how to ask you to fulfill that need. But we come asking you, Heavenly Father, to give us strength and the courage that we need, Father, as we, as we face uncertain times. Father, give us the faith that would sustain us, Heavenly Father, through our trials and, and through our tribulations. Father, we ask you to look up on the bereaved families, Lord, that lost loved one and still struggling Heavenly Father just trying to accept a new position in life. God we're just asking you to bless those who are sick and those who are shut in Heavenly Father who, who has grim outlook for their lives in this world but let them know Heavenly Father that Lord that this world don't dominate over your spirit. It don't dominate over your will. Whatever goes down here, yeah, Lord, that you are still in charge. Father, we ask you to bless those who are locked behind prison walls or those who are in their homes, Lord, those who are facing the different depression brought on, Heavenly Father, by this virus, God. We just ask you, Heavenly Father, to lift them up and remind them, God, that you are in control. Remind them, Heavenly Father, that they are your children and, God, that you will never leave or forsaken them. We ask you, Heavenly Father, to go with us and stand by us and please stand for us. Lord, we claim victory in the name of Jesus and we count it as already done in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, we pray. Amen. Praise be to God who gives us the victory. We come this morning and we just want to Say again before we, we get uh, started, we want to remind everybody that, that God's doors are still open. As we said, the door of the church is open. The door of the church is open. That God still stands with his hands stretched out and he says to us, whosoever will, let him come. That God is still accepting those who would accept him. As I said before, that salvation has been bought and paid for. Christ has paid the ultimate price for salvation. And anyone that feels the need that they have not been saved, that they feel that they need to be rescued, then that salvation is available. It has already been paid for for you. Regardless of who you are, it's already been paid for for you. So. We want to put that out there and we want to let that be known first and foremost. We also want to let it be known that if you are dealing with the things of the heart, if you are wrestling with salvation and God is challenging your heart, we want you to know that you can give me a call at 731-234-1849. And I'll be willing and happy to talk with you to read scripture with you, to, to give you whatever guidance that I could possibly give to help you to establish a relationship with God, or even just straighten a relationship that you feel uh, that just sort of becoming weak. At this time, we want to read a 
couple of scriptures coming from the book of 1 Samuel. Uh, a familiar story, but I want to talk about this story, but I want to show a little different view on it than a lot of time we think, because a lot of time we mostly uh, reflect our attention on David, and what's there is a lot to be looked at upon him, and we, we will look at David, but I want to also look at Goliath. We want to look at Goliath just a little bit closer. Uh, scripture reading coming from the 17th chapter, the first Samuel 4 down through the 8th verse. We'll also look at the 17th chapter, we'll move over and read from the 44 down through the 46th verse. And the scripture reading that there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gate whose height was six cubes and a span. In other words, his height is over nine foot tall. And he had a helmet of brass upon his head. And he was on with a coat of meal. And the weight of his coat was 5,000 sickles of brass. And he went and he had a grave of brass upon his leg and a target of brass between his shoulders. And a staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam. And his spearhead weighed 600 sickles of iron. And one bearing his shield went before him. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel. And said unto them, Why are you come out to set your battle in array? Am I not, am I not a Philistine and you not the servants of Saul, choose a man for me, and let him come down to fight me. We look at the 44th verse as David, uh, from the words of David, uh, and the Philistine said, uh, and the Philistine said to David, come to me as I will give the flesh, excuse me, uh, this is, this is after David and the Philistine is being engaged with one another. They are walking toward one another. They are meeting one another. And the Philistine said unto David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowl of the air and to the beast of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with swords and with spears and with shields, but I come to thee. In the name of the Lord God of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. In other words, I'm coming to you in the name of the God, the God that you have challenged, Israel's God. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smit thee, and take thine head from thee, and I will give thy carcass unto the carcass of the host of the Philistines, this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. He says, I'm going to give the give the, the, the carcass of the host of the Philistine to the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. The host meaning that you are the, that the Philistines are saviors. In other words, Goliath came as the one that would be the great battle, great uh, warrior that would give victory unto the Philistine. But I want to look back a moment, and I said I want to focus on Goliath, how Goliath was on. You see, it, 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 was, it was not just uh, enough to tell uh, about Goliath being this giant of a man who comes out to challenge Israel. The scripture shows us that it's so important for us to not only just see him as a big man, but see how he is prepared, how he becomes prepared to, to win, prepared to do battle, to prepare to overthrow the house of Israel, to prepare to defeat the army of Israel. It shows us how it is that he has the best armor, he has the best 
helmet on that can be manufactured. He, he has the best armor on that money can buy. He has the best uh, of everything for a warrior. He has everything he needs. And, and not only do he have the best armor on, he has an arm barrier that go before him to carry his shield. And not only is Goliath, he, 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 has, he, he has the reputation. In Scripture sci-fi, it is important for us to know that not only was Goliath dressed for battle, but Goliath had a reputation because the Scripture describes him as being a champion. A champion is one who has not lost the battle. He is a champion. He is standing there. He is defying the army of Israel simply because he has been in battle before and he has overthrown and he has overtaken and he has won battles before. Therefore, he has become given uh, the, the, the title of being a champion. And as I look at Goliath and how it is that he comes forward, he comes forward and he challenges the army of Israel. And I think about how it is as he comes forward. And he says to them, send me out a man to fight against me. And I thought about that as the Lord began to show this to me. He began to show me how Goliath's words are tailored just to defeat. He's not just speaking words that he has not thought through. He's speaking words that mean something. He's speaking words of power. For he is saying to Saul, send me a man. I'm not interested in fighting a whole army. I just want you to send him out man to man. And Goliath's hope is that Saul would be foolish enough to send him out one man at a time who I can take him down, who I can destroy him. And not only destroy him in the midst of destroying him, destroy all that looks upon him. And even if, even if Saul will not send me out one man at a time, he was least, he would least that I would be able to fight against him. I would be able to take him down one by one by the thought that Saul may spit send me out. For I know if I was a man having that place, Goliath. And here are the challenge that is put before and afraid that maybe I hope my king don't send me out. Because you see what Goliath is set forward to do is to break down, is destroy. Goliath has come forward to destroy and to break down before the battle even come to fruition. He's not about trying to battle the whole army of Israel. He's about destroying it destroy the Israel first of all with fear. It's about breaking them down before he's ever get to them. It is about already getting into their mind and getting into their heart and breaking their heart and breaking their will even before he even come in contact with them. Clyde is not interested in fighting. He's interested in killing before he get there and breaking down before he get there. And when he get there, all he has to do is push over the shell of a man. There are so many battles that we have to fight. There are so many battles that we come in contact with. There are so many battles and so many challenges that we have to deal with day by day. And I thought about how it was that God sent David forward. David comes forward not looking like much. He actually shows up as an insult. As Goliath looks at this little fella that comes out to fight him, he feels insulted. He feels insulted because this guy is not worthy to come out against me. But David comes out and he comes out against Goliath. And he comes out with a divine, he had comes out with a divine spirit. And he comes out with a divine confidence. And that's what we want to talk about, is a divine confidence. You see, the whole army of Israel had depended upon their sword, had depended upon their leadership, had depended upon their spirit, had depended upon the thing that had been manufactured by man. But David comes out and he is not depending upon anything that has been manufactured by man. He is depending upon a divine confidence that God gives, that which comes from heaven, that which only God can supply. That's what David comes forward in. 
And as he comes forward and he began to ask questions and he began to talk about as he would challenge the jack and as he tells Saul about his desire to, to fight him and Saul said, you can't go up against him. You're nothing but a child. You're nothing but a youth. And he's been a warrior ever since he was a child. He's been a warrior from a youth. But David began to share his credentials that a lion had come up against my father's lamb and against my father's sheep. That a bride had come up against him when I was overseer. And I rules up when they rules up against me, I rules up against them. And I overcome both the lamb and I overcome both the bride. And I cut the lamb out of his mouth. And he said this uncircumcised Philistine would be no different than they were. David had won battles before. He had been challenged with odds against him before. He had won battles that he was not supposed to win if you look at it from the natural side. But the scripture have already told us that man looked on the outward appearance, but God looked at the heart. Because you see, although Goliath was a big man, he was a big individual, but it don't take a big physical structure to be a big man. It takes somebody with a big heart, a heart of God. Because you see, when you got the heart of God, God is so high you can't go over him. So low you can't go over him, on him and so wide you can't go around him. And this is the God that David knew that was backing him. This is the God that David knew that stood behind him. This is the God that David knew that Goliath had challenged he had challenged God. When he challenged the army of Israel, he had actually challenged God. And David knew that God would never leave or forsaken him. He understood that he was not the one that gave the victory, that God gave the victory. He understood that he was just an instrument who God has called forward to do battle. And the scripture let us know how it is that God will sometimes choose the weaker things. The thing that looked like it has no power. The thing that looked like it cannot win. God choose those things. Why? That God might be glorified. And the scripture lets us know that as Saul talked to David, and that David has convinced him now that he is able to fight, he had no confidence that in, in David that he could win. He said, go and may the Lord be with you. He has no hope. If this ready little guy winning. And the scripture said that Saul gave David his armor. And it's David a saved to go. In other words, when David began to analyze himself, he began to analyze his victory. When he began to, to weigh out, how can I win? What do I need to win? He realized, I do not need Saul's armor to win. Because his helmet is too big. His, 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 his armor is too loose. His arm is something I've never fought in. I've never won a victory in somebody else's armor. I've never won a victory wearing somebody else's helmet. Every time God has given me victory, he has given me the victory just by the faith that I had in him. And the scripture said that David is saved to go. He says to Saul, I cannot go with thee. For I have not proved them. I've never won a battle in them. I cannot go with them. And the scripture said, David put off Saul's armor. And as he put off Saul's armor, he goes forward with nothing but a staff in his hand. He goes forward with nothing but a stick and a slingshot. And the scripture says he picks up five smooth stones out of the brook. And he goes and he meets Saul. And he meets Goliath the giant. And as they are coming towards one another, they are hurling insults to one another. The giant is hurling insults to install the fear to try to break him down. But David is not in hurling insults of, of empty promises. David is making promises that God will give me victory over you. I thought about this as I looked at this and I thought about how it is that we are dealing with right now in our nation and our countries in the world. We are dealing with right now a giant that we can't see. A giant that is so big that he is worldwide. And how it is that this giant is not all just killing people by the contact, but it's killing people before it gets to them. I thought about how it is, how it is emotionally people have been become broken. I thought about it how it is that people have become so suicidal. The suicidal rate 
has increased so much that how it is that the giant has destroyed so many people even before it's even got to him. He's already affecting people before they get to him. Why? Because their hope is not in God. David was able to win. He knew he was to win because his hope was not in the doctors. His hope was not in the scientists. His confidence was a divine confidence that come down from God. I don't know where this is all going. I don't know what it's all going to do. But I know if you keep your hand in God's hand, there is no way that you can lose. A divine confidence is not something that is come up with in a laboratory. A divine confidence is not something that a scientist has come up with. A divine confidence is something that is old as the world is in itself. It is to believe in the creator that made you. It is to believe in the God that called you his child. It is to believe in the one who has the blueprint, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. So what am I saying? Keep your hand in God's hand. Oh yes, look to man and all of man, respect man, but keep your faith in God, in God. Keep your faith in God because you see, whenever a man's confidence is broken, his hope is broken. And that's what Goliath put forward to break the confidence and to break the hope. And in terms, now all he has to do is push over a shell. We are destroyed. Many peoples are being destroyed because they lost their jobs. Many of people have been destroyed because they lost their business. Many of their businesses won't come back. But I have come to know that every now and then, God will suffer one door to close in order to open another door. I have come to know that a lot of time in order to come up, you have to go down. Whenever you trust God, the thing that looks broken is not always broken. The thing that looks like it's dying is not always dying. How it is that so many times God will allow things to get in a bad shape that God might be glorified before he come to our rescue. And how it is that he sends out small things to give big victories. So I'm saying today to keep your hand in God's hand. Keep your hope in the creator and the maker and the one who have given your life. Keep your confidence in the divine spirit. Oh my God. Praise him. Confidence in God. And knowing that God has not brought you this far to leave you. And while we may not know all that we will have to deal with before this is over, we do know that we have a God that is big enough we do know that we have a God who is able. We know that we have a God who has already said, heaven and earth may pass away, but my word will not pass away. We know that we have a God that I will not leave you or forsaken you. We know that we have a God that still says the earth is mine and the fullness thereof. And I'm telling you to trust in the God that created it all. Trust in the God that without him nothing exists. Don't you know if he made it? He know all about it. And don't you know if he made it? He know how to fix it. And don't you know if he allows you to come in trouble? He know how to deliver you. God bless you. And may he keep you. I pray this morning that you go to the cross of Christ. Know what he done out there on Calvary. Know that that cross was out there for you. And that price that was paid out there was not because he had sin of his own, but he paid a price because you and I had sins in ourselves. And he paid a price for us because we was too little and didn't have enough resources to pay the price for our own self. So I encourage you in the cross. I encourage you in the burial. And I encourage you in the resurrection. That the scripture have said, because he has got up, we shall get up also. The door of the church is open again. And the scripture says, whosoever will, let him come. And if God has spoken to your heart and you need someone to talk to, give me a call. 731-231849. God bless you and may he keep you. Thank you.